Uh, very good evening to you and welcome to Talking Sheffield this Thursday evening. Alan Biggs with a warm welcome to the programme. By goodness me, it is a warm welcome. It's warm if you're outside this evening. It's certainly very warm in here. Uh, Yuri, uh, one of our guests, Uriah Rennie, needs a very little introduction. Sheffield's former international referee is sensibly uh, dressed uh, this evening, uh, more sensibly than some of our other guests, who will include... Uh, <laughs> An ultra runner, a friend of mine actually, called Simon Walkden, who has a website called Longest Day Run. Yes, that should send uh, chills down your spine with the date of June the 21st closing in very rapidly. He's going to ask you to run as far as you can on that particular day for charity, all in a good cause. Uriah. Uriah Rennie, good to welcome you to the studio. Uh, your choice of uh, shirt with predominantly blue and white is going to be a little bit controversial, possibly, with some people. But uh, nevertheless, we'll forgive you. Well, thank you for the welcome, man. You know, when you, when you choose clothes as often or, or as infrequent as I do, whatever, whatever you can. And I have to say... Anything suits me. Yeah, it's better than a regular <laughs> kit anyway. <laughs> and I'm with you, I'm with you, Alan Barker, mm -hmm. who's one of the organisers. Now, we're going to talk a little bit about your, your career, uh, Yuri, uh, which embraced 1994 to 2009, uh, a distinguished Premier League referee, a FIFA referee. Also, Uriah here is uh, the first referee ever to send... Alan Shearer from the field of play. Uh, he also is a man who got to grips memorably with Roy Keane on one occasion. A uh, little bit of a teaser there to some of the conversation coming up. But you're not going to go to bed tomorrow night, are you? No, no, no. Um, we're organising in, in aid of uh, St Luke's, of which I'm uh, one of the patron, a 12-hour walking football scheduled to take place at Illsville Leisure Centre where a lot of the uh, personalities um, from football, rugby, golf, um, TT, table tennis, um, basketball, golfers, a range of people, including my friends, families and supporters, are going to uh, burn the midnight oil and uh, um, listen to Paul Pashler sing and um, all right. play football uh, yeah. all night. Guy with you, uh, Alan Barker. Now, you're hoping to organise this at uh, Hillsborough Leisure Centre. Yes. What's that, a Lees, Lees Hall Golf Club? Lees Hall Golf Club, Club, yep. Yeah, you're prepared to sweat in this studio for the sake of giving Lees Hall a... <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Great golf club, yep. So, what's, what form is it going to take? Have you, have you got teams already in place, or can anybody just turn up and, and do this? Yeah. If I can come in there. Really, what, what's happened is that um, it's going to be... 12 hours continuous. Mm -hmm. It's walking. Uh, yep. I've chosen the fact that um, we can get everyone involved. So it's a community event. So it's not about a team. You, you, you come down, you have your blue shirt and your red shirt. And dependent on when you come, you'll go on to a team. And clearly, we want to make it as competitive as we can. So if someone, a, te a particular team, say Reds, winning 5 nil, then we'll change around to make sure the better players yeah. go. So it's a continuous. So we'll keep the, the, the running score throughout the, the night. So we'll have, doubtless, like, um, something 300 versus 300 goals versus 500 goals. Right. Um, versus Red versus Blue. So that's what it's about. All ages. Absolutely. All ages. Start start at uh, nine p.m. Yeah. Finish at well. Finish at nine nine, nine a.m. Nine a.m. Yeah. Nine a.m. Yeah. yeah. Y yes. Um, are, are you refing this? Well, I'm I'm open to to to, to have an easy night, but I'll, I'll start it off, and then and dependent on what the, uh, the the players are like, if they behave themselves, then I might take a step back, and some of my other colleagues will there. But you know, we, we've got boxers, got Johnny Nelson, so I might put him in there. We've got Mark Aston, all the the yeah. team from the Eagles, they're coming. Right. Um, so it should. The only thing we should really be worried about is that make sure that people don't start running. Anything else? Um, yeah, because it's a natural reflex and instinct, isn't it? The, for those of a certain age, you know, I'm still young enough to run. I mean, you, you might have a few 70-year-olds there or whatever, but... Well, yeah, we, um, I think the youngest is going to be about nine-year-old um, with the parents coming. And also we have in um, um, Richmond Rocket, which is a women's only um, walking football team. And I think the, the youngest of those, and they're coming at half past seven in the morning, is, um, they're 73 years of age or young. So, right. um, and there, there's six of them coming. Sounds like a lot of fun. If they do start running, that's when you get involved as a referee, yeah? Well, yes, yes. Yeah. And, and, and the old point about it is to 
it's fun, enjoyment, and it's about raising the profile of St. Luke's and also just giving yeah. the people the opportunity to, to be able to do something uh, and, and spend some time and give some time. How much are you hoping to raise for St. Luke's with it? Um, I've not actually set a target. The reason why I said that because I don't want that to be something that we just aim for. It's about mm. trying to raise a profile. It's about trying mm. to get someone to get involved. Because clearly, if someone, um, a youngster or whoever it might be, decide that they're going to um, s clean cars or do something to raise some money, and if they've only made three pound fifty, and I've said that it's ten pounds to play, mm. then that's unfair. So it's about giving the time. It's about getting involved. Yeah. And it's about doing our little bit. That's all we can do. I you're very much a community man. You're, yeah. you're a magistrate. You give time to community that way. We'll talk later about the fact that you're the president of Hallam yeah. FC and have been for five years. And you're involved in quite a lot of charity schemes. Let me just say that if you'd like to sponsor this great effort from, from Yuri and everyone here on behalf of St Luke's Hospice, you can do by going on to justgiving.com forward slash Yuri. That's not the full name. Everybody uh, in football knows Uriah as Yuri. I, I take it you, pr you prefer Yuri to Uriah, do you? Uh, or is it just stuck from an early age? It's just stuck. When I used to play football, if you said Uriah, I'd pass the ball to somebody else. If you said yeah. Uri, you got a chance. <laughs> so. Right, so that's justgiving.com forward slash Yuri, U-R-I. And to all contributions gratefully uh, received. Uh, Alan Hillsborough Leisure Centre. Uh, right. There's a swimming pool there as well, isn't there? Yeah. I think, I believe so. Yeah. <laughs> so cool, it might be a few calling off. Might be a few going in, between, in, yeah, calling off, yeah. yeah in between all that. From, from our point of view, we've got a team going up tomorrow night to uh, support yeah, I say Yuri okay. from Leeds Hall. We've um, raised quite a bit of money towards it from the mm. membership, which is uh, fantastic. So, And when I, when I say he asked me to help him out, then it worked both ways for us, didn't it? Because events we've got coming up at Leeds Hall for charity as well, where it's uh, out of Western Park. Cancer research, mm -hmm. so Yuri, uh, we both got involved with each other. This one for St. Luke's, which is fantastic, mm -hmm. and obviously uh, Western Park, which is great as well. So it works both ways. He's going to help me, and uh, I'm going to help him. Indeed, that's very, very good. Um, we're going to take you back over your career. Later, as I said, we're going to have uh, Simon Walton on uh, and his. Uh, website uh, longest day run this this ultra uh, running that he that he does that puts my 30, mere 13 miles into the, into the shade very often he's, he's also a Manchester United supporter so I'm going to let him loose at you uh, Yuri in the second half of the show and he's he's been making a list of all the controversies uh, involving his team that you might have been involved in over the years as you look back on your career do those Moments stand out. I mean, you're you're a very very fine referee, but it goes with the territory, doesn't it? That you're going to be a talking point. Yes, it, when you go out there, you don't want to be the centre of uh, attention. But clearly, as an arbitrator, you're there to make a decision when there's a point of dispute. And clearly, our game is such that I believe that, <laughs> including the, the current circumstances, that we're clean. So when they appeal, they appeal because they genuinely th thought or think that they've won the ball or, or they've not done wrong. And so when I go, yes, you have, then effectively what I'm saying to you, you're wrong or you're cheating, not in that sense, but it becomes very, very emotional and, and the spectators are no different. All I will say is that every one of our referees are, are genuine and you know, you live by the sword, die by the sword, and, and therefore, if you put yourself in the public eye, then you're going to take some hits. And yeah. taking some hits, I, I think I have done in the past. You certainly have, but so is every so is every referee. It, as you say, it goes with the territory. You're always a very low-profile referee away from the game. I don't recall reading a quote from you. Uh, I've never done an interview with you about refereeing. Now you've retired, it's a little bit different. But while you were active, yeah. you never spoke about it, did you? No, no. My view was that... I'm there to do a job. It's very rarely that people will want to, to speak to you about the good things about what you're doing currently. Um, and my view is mm. that I want to be, to be able to leave a legacy where people are encouraged to go into the, uh, the, the career and into the refereeing. And it's not just about getting things right and wrong. It's about taking the opportunity, it's about having a go. It's about moving the community from one, one level to the next. But why I wasn't involved? Well, I didn't think that there was any journalist that was always going to give me a fair hearing in terms of giving a putting across the point of view that's reflecting what I wanted to say. Maybe it was because I wasn't prepared to actually um, work too closely with journalists because 
they've got their job to do similarly and I've got yeah. my job to do that. And sometimes it doesn't work. You just have to draw a line and say, well, it's not for me at this stage and, and move yeah. on. You're quite right in the sense that when journalists want to speak to match officials, it's not to say what a great game you've had and yeah. to comment about the great game. It's always about those incidents. But it might not be that you've made a mistake. It might be that you're explaining why you got it right and that enlightens everybody. Yeah, but my view is that the fact that I'm there to make a decision, if I point to so that Red gets the ball, then yeah. that's the decision. I'm no, not going to change my mind because at the time, that is the best decision yeah. I can give. And I think that, you know, you, 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 you've got to be positively right, but yeah. sometimes you've got, you're also positively wrong. And that in itself has a cumulative effect in that if you don't show hesitation, providing that you're not willful, players want you to be decisive and sometimes being decisive helps you take the game along so you're yeah. not going to be swayed by the players, management and, and everybody else again coming after you and surrounding you. So my view was that I did it. I did it my way. You did it your way, yeah. You certainly did. Well, you were, you were an instantly recognisable figure, a very imposing figure, a very fit referee. I thought Keith Hackett at one time said you were the fittest referee the Premier League had ever seen. I that, think was he, yeah, that was last year. Yeah, that was only last year. It's regrettable that you had to retire so early, really, because of, uh, because of injuries. Uh, you've been retired 10 years now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, um, well, at 45 when you when you when yeah. you left. Yeah, the, the the thing is that I mean I came off FIFA at 45 and at 09 I, I finished because of injuries, yeah. but because it was um, I'm a job, I could still go back because obviously you know there's no age limit, but clearly father time does catch up with you, yeah. and when you've been running around and doing that, what I've been doing in terms of the contact sports and training, then it catches up with you, as we all know, in, in terms of dodgy knees. Oh, well, don't do that. <laughs> I've got runner's knees, there's, there's no question there. Uh, for those who, well, just to recap, Uriah uh, started uh, refereeing in the Football League in 1994. Uh, in 1997, he was promoted to the Premier League. He was on the Premier League for 12 years yes. until 2009. You corrected yes, me quite right. Yeah. So only six years since you yeah. bowed out from the Premier League. And you were on FIFA for five years, 2000 to 2005. Um, you know, two incidents sort of stand out uh, for me. I don't know what only it is. Two. <laughs> only two. Well, only two. I could could go on, but I don't know what it is about you and St James's Park at Newcastle. <laughs> but it was there that in 1999 that you issued Alan Shearer with his first red card. Uh, when I researched it today, it was for persistent use of the elbow. Yes. It wasn't just for one elbowing. No, 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 no. No, no, no. Um, I can actually just say yes and no. <laughs> and you can if you like, but... Um... Um, but, no, no, but, but the point being is that, is that when you are charged with the responsibility of being guardian of the standards, you have to do what you think is right. And yeah. it, no, no means no in anyone's language. And the estate that I came from, tough to fix it, same as out. If you're told not to do something, you don't do it. But if you do do it, then you must expect action. So... Those who are here will feel. So he was warned <laughs> more than once. <laughs> but it can be a straight red just for one, can't it? With yeah, the yeah. My view was that I, I was looking, and generally, if someone's going to hit you and going to strike you, it's a clenched fist. That, that's the yeah. martial arts strike. If it's open. And you do do martial yes, arts. Yeah. Yes. So when you look at what was happening, there was an element of no, it wasn't a strike as such, but it was design it was deliberate and so therefore things happen and you have to uh, take the how did he fashion. take it um well i think he, he enjoyed the shower before the rest <laughs> of the <day. laughs> um so he cooled off uh, yeah I, I think the thing is that it, it's it's one of those things as a center forward reg regrettably as it was sometimes you get away with things other times you don't yeah. i mean uh, and I, I think on that occasion he didn't but that doesn't make him any lesser a player. No. Um, and, and I suppose... Did you learn from it? Well, yes. Yeah. <laughs> so, so I had a long time to learn from it. But, it, you know, if he wants to come and sign at Hallam... Um, Hallam FC, of course. <laughs> yeah, we'll yeah. talk about that I'm in the second I'm to, uh, to welcome him with yeah. some padding. Yeah. <laughs> um, and uh, you know you know, I'm going to mention the other one now. You know which one it is, don't you, as well, don't you? Um, it was the northeast again. I don't know why I just said St James's mm. Park. It was the northeast of England. That was at St James's Park with Shearer. It was at the Stadium of Light, Sunderland against Manchester United. This was 2002. When, shall we say, you got to grips with Roy Keane. You're the only referee, really, who has. 
The only person really on or off the field, I would <laughs> su suggest, who's really got to grips with Roy Keane. Now, this was a running battle, wasn't it, with Jason uh, McAteer, Sunderland yeah. Manchester United, and you intervened. But actually, you were praised for that um, because um, you, you tried to defuse something. Yeah, there were, there was two schools of thought to that one in terms of if I'm stood there, I need to protect the players, both physically and mentally. Because if someone was abusing someone and sort of verbally, then I would deal with that. Um, so when I went in to try and stop what was likely to happen, it was because I knew that had he got older and then things would have gone. It yeah. would, football would have been the, the loser, would, yeah. would have lost. So I, I dealt with it in that way the best way I could. There were those who thought that I ought not to have because... A lot of the people that are the referees for Sunday mornings in local leagues were saying, well, we can't do that on a Sunday because if we go yeah. in a minor's arm versus Queen's Ed and yeah. this is going to happen, yeah. they're half drunk and, yeah. uh, you know, sort of, you know, they're on the sideline. We can't encourage our referees to do that. No. And so, therefore, my, when I said earlier about responsibilities, then I have to then look and say, well, was I correct? And I think where I was at the time, I was correct to do that because it stopped mass confrontation and it, it stopped yeah. the, the, the football being dragged um, down into, I wouldn't say the gutter, but, the, but, but certainly in a negative effect. But I also understood that minus arm versus, you know, sort of red line, you really can't sort of go in and start pulling people apart because no. you know, it's a dangerous way. It wasn't textbook, was it? It wasn't, no, but it was effective, I think. Yes, because yeah. you restrained Roy Keane. Uh, you, you, you virtually manhandled him and stopped him going for the throat mm. or where, wherever yeah. of Jason McAteer. And at the time, there was a raging debate about whether you were right or, or, or you were wrong. I've got a feeling, I think, the media came down in, in your favour there yeah, on well. that one. What about your bosses, though? Did you, get, did you get asked to explain yourself or reprimanded or did you get told you did that? Because Philip Don was supportive, wasn't he, your boss yeah, at the so, time? It, yes. I th I, the issue was that how did I choose to go for Roy rather than Jason? <laughs> I would yeah. think that if I'd have gone for Jason, then Roy might have got a free punch. <laughs> yeah. But I don't think I don't think um, Jason was going to attack Roy. No. Um, so when I decided to actually get in between the two, my my view was to stop it. Then I fully understood the FA thinking, and in in as much as I said, well, okay. The protocol was blow, 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 then pick up the pieces afterwards because that's, yeah. that's, that's what we have to do. But you've got to use your experience and that time, you deal with things as you think is right. And I felt that I was able to intervene early enough into that seemingly situation to stop it escalating. So, so it wasn't, it's not, it wasn't, nobody was going to say that's the way to behave in that. So that, they weren't advising other referees to do it, but they were saying in this scenario, actually, he did well. Yes, yeah, yes. Quietly, yeah. on the quiet. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it reminds me of that saying that, that rules are for the, um, uh, for the, for the, for the uh, obedience of fools and the guidance of wise men. Ah, uh, okay. Well, in other words, you're allowed to break them now and again if it's common sense. Well, yeah. you, well, I thought it, you were going to ask me to actually remember that saying. Oh. No, I wasn't. Well, yeah, that's, your, that's your homework tonight. But actually, you did eventually in that game send off Roy Keane, didn't you? <laughs> I did. I did. I did. Um, well, he just carried on. It, well, yes. It, uh, and then th that was the other issue is that you, you, as an official, you've got to think, well, why should sort of one player maybe... 8% of the player mm. on, the, uh, on the field or the staff take up 90% of your time. Right. And effectively, that's what happened. Um, so there, there was also the school of thought, and, and on reflection, what I did after, I said, well, maybe it would have been better just let him do what he did, what he wanted to do, and get rid. But then I would have let myself and him and the game down. So you wouldn't have managed no. the situation, no. which you did by man managing or manhandling... Yeah. Yeah. The player, it was an did, interesting did, did any player ever intimidate you? No. 
Absolutely. Not one. No, 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 not at all. I, ne I never felt well, intimidated in any way, uh, shape, or form by the crowd. In a few minutes' place. time, I'm going to unleash a Manchester United supporter <laughs> on you because we're approaching the break. Yuri, more chat from you okay. about your refereeing career, more on this walking football marathon. Thanks ever so much, Alan Barker. Going to substitute you with Simon Walkden. James Gregg's going to come in, and we're going to see you in five minutes. See you. Ah, very good evening to you and welcome to Talking Sheffield this Thursday evening. Alan Biggs with a warm welcome to the programme. By goodness me, it is a warm welcome. It's warm if you're outside this evening. It's certainly very warm in here. Uh, Yuri, uh, one of our guests, Uriah Rennie, needs a very little introduction. Sheffield's former international referee is sensibly uh, dressed uh, this evening, uh, more sensibly than some of our other guests, who will include... Uh, <laughs> An ultra runner, a friend of mine actually, called Simon Walkden, who has a website called Longest Day Run. Yes, that should send uh, chills down your spine with the date of June the 21st closing in very rapidly. He's going to ask you to run as far as you can on that particular day for charity, all in a good cause. Uriah, Uriah Rennie, good to welcome you to the studio. With the parents come in. And also we have in um, um, Richmond Rocket, which are... Uh, women's only um, walking football team and I think the, the youngest of those and they're coming at half past seven in the morning is, um, they're 73 years of age or young so, right. um, and there, there's six of them come in Sounds like a lot of fun. If they do start running that's when you get involved as a referee, yeah? Well yes, yes yeah. and, and the old point about it is to it's fun, enjoyment, and it's about raising the profile of St Luke's and also just giving yeah. the people the opportunity to, to be able to do something uh, and, and spend some time and give some time. How much are you hoping to raise for St Luke's with it? Um, I've not actually set a target. The reason why I said that, because I don't want that to be something that we just aim for. It's about mm. trying to raise a profile. It's about trying mm. to get someone to get involved. Because clearly if someone, um, a youngster or whoever it might be, decide that they're going to... Um, clean cars or do something to raise some money. And if they've only made £3.50 and I've said that it's £10 to play, mm. then that's unfair. So it's about giving the time, it's about getting involved, yeah. and it's about doing our little bit. That's all we can do. Uh, you're very much a community man. You're, yeah. you, you're a magistrate, you give time to the community that way. We'll talk later about video. Uh, your choice of uh, shirt with predominantly blue and white is going to be a little bit controversial, possibly, with some people. But uh, nevertheless, we'll forgive you. Well, thank you for the welcome, man. You know, when you, when you choose clothes as often or, or as infrequent as I do, whatever, whatever you can. And I have to say, anything suits me. Yeah, it's better than a <laughs> <laughs> kit anyway. And, I'm with you. <laughs> I'm with you, Alan Barker, mm -hmm. who's one of the organisers. Now, we're going to talk a little bit about your, your career, uh, Yuri, uh, which embraced 1994 to 2009, uh, a distinguished Premier League referee, a FIFA referee. Also, Uriah here is uh, the first referee ever to send Alan Shearer from the field of play. Uh, he also is a man who got to grips memorably with Roy Keane on one occasion. A uh, little bit of a teaser there to some of the conversation coming up. But you're not going to go to bed tomorrow night, are you? No, no, no. Um, we're organising in, in aid of uh, St Luke's, of which I'm uh, one of the patron, a 12-hour walking football scheduled to take place at Illsville Leisure Centre where a lot of the uh, personalities um, from football, rugby, golf, um, TT, table tennis, um, basketball, golfers, a range of people, including my friends, families and supporters, are going to uh, burn the midnight oil and uh, um, listen to Paul Pashley sing and um, all right. play football uh, yeah. all night. Guy with you, uh, Alan Barker. Now, you're hoping to organise this at uh, Hillsborough Leisure Centre. Yes. What's that, a Lees, Lees Hall Golf Club? Lees Hall Golf it? Club, yep. Yeah, you're prepared to sweat in this studio for the sake of giving Lees <laughs> Hall a... Absolutely. Yeah. Great golf club, <laughs> yep. So, what's, what form is it going to take? Have you, have you got teams already in place, or can anybody just turn up and, and do this? Yeah. If I can come in there. Really, what, what's happened is that um, it's going to be... 12 hours continuous, mm -hmm. it's walking, uh, yep. I've chosen the fact that um, we can get 
everyone involved. So it's a community event. So it's not about a team. You, you, you come down, you have your blue shirt and your red shirt. And dependent on when you come, you'll go on to a team. And clearly, we want to make it as competitive as we can. So if someone, a, te a particular team, say Reds winning 5 nil, then we'll change around to make sure the better players yeah. go. So it's a continuous. So we'll keep the, the, the running score throughout the, the night. So we'll have, doubtless, like, um, something 300 versus 300 goals versus 500 goals. Right. Um, versus red versus blue. So that's what it's about. All ages. Absolutely. All ages. Start start at uh, nine p.m. Yeah. Finish at well. Finish at nine a, nine a.m. Nine a.m. Yeah. Yes. Um, are, are you refing this? Well, I'm I'm open to 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 have an easy night, but I'll I'll start it off. And then, and depending on what the, uh, the the players are like, if they behave themselves, then I might take a step back and some of my other colleagues will there. But, you know, we, we've got boxers, got Johnny Nelson, so I might put him in there. We've got Mark Aston, all the, the yeah. team from the Eagles, they're coming. Right. Um, so it should, the only thing we should really be worried about is that make sure that people don't start running. Anything else? Um, yeah, because it's a natural reflex and instinct, isn't it? The, for those of a certain age, you know, I'm still young enough to run. I mean, you, you might have a few 70-year-olds there, whatever, but... Well, yeah, we. I think the youngest is going to be about nine-year-old. Uh, 